Hey guys, first of all, sorry for my appearance. If I'm looking a little rough, it's been a long day. Just put my kids to bed. Uh, but with tomorrow's weather looking kind of suspicious, I figured it was probably better to record my lesson just in case my power goes out, your power goes out. Who knows what, is it, what it's gonna be like tomorrow, Thursday. Um, so you are actually going to be watching this little video where I am actually going to be building a muscle. There is a notes organizer for you to fill out as you watch this video. So make sure you open that document. I would recommend printing it out. Uh, that way you don't have to flip back and forth between the video and the notes organizer, but there is a digital version of the notes organizer if you need it. Okay, so today we are going to be looking at the anatomy and really the macro or big picture anatomy of a skeletal muscle. So remember, when I say skeletal muscle, there are three types of muscle tissues. We learned this when we did our histology unit. There's skeletal muscle, which is what we're looking at today, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. So if you remember, skeletal muscle are striated, they are multinucleate cells, they are voluntary, and they're typically attached to the skeleton. So this is what we're looking at today. When you think of a muscle, you're typically thinking of a skeletal muscle. And today we're gonna look at how a skeletal muscle is structured using very simple materials. So there are somewhere around 640-ish skeletal muscles. And I say ish because that number is kind of up for argument depending on who you ask. If you ask a muscle specialist, they'll tell you there are somewhere around 800 and something skeletal muscles. But for our sake, we're gonna say around 640, 650. Do you need to know 650 muscles? Absolutely not. I certainly don't know 650 muscles. I would like for you to know some major ones and I would like you to know some functions. So the purpose of muscles are locomotion, posture, balance, support of your internal organs, controlling some of the valves of your body and some of your body openings, production of heat, and moving materials along the internal tubes of your body. About 40% of your mass is actually muscle, which is pretty crazy, right? Muscle is, is pretty dense, has a lot of weight to it. Skeletal muscles themselves are mainly responsible for locomotion, movement of the body, and voluntary contraction and relaxation. We will talk more in detail about how a skeletal muscle contracts and relaxes. We're not really gonna get, gonna get into that today. So this is what we're looking at right here, the muscular system, focusing today on all these beautiful skeletal muscles. So big picture, I need you to understand that skeletal muscles are composed of what we call bundles within bundles. And that particular type of arrangement gives the muscle an incredible amount of strength. Okay, so you have the muscle organ. Within the muscle organ, there are lots of bundles. And even within those bundles, there are smaller bundles. So this picture here shows you a good idea of these bundles within bundles. Here's the entire muscle. You can see these individual bundles here. And then within those bundles, there are even further bundles. Makes the muscle very strong. So here's how I'm gonna illustrate this bundles within bundles. I have some Twizzler pull and peels. Each individual strand of my Twizzler pull and peel represents a muscle cell. And I'm gonna use the word muscle cell and muscle fiber a lot over the next few minutes. They mean the same thing. A muscle cell is a muscle fiber. Muscle fiber is a muscle cell. The thing about muscle cells or muscle fibers, my Twizzler pull and peel, peel is even a single cell or fiber is made up of stuff, right? Here's a single muscle cell, muscle fiber. You can see there's a lot going on within just a single muscle cell. Even a muscle cell is made up of smaller, what we call myofibrils. That's this here. And within those myofibrils, they have contracting units. This is our actual unit of contraction called a sarcomere. And again, we'll get into sarcomeres when we look at the uh, microanatomy of a skeletal muscle and how it actually contracts. But even sarcomeres have smaller filaments within the myofibril. Thick filaments called myosin and thin filaments called actin. But you'll notice that a single muscle cell, while there is some give and some strength there, it's really not that hard to tear, to rip, right? I can just pull my little Twizzler pull in part pretty easily. But here's the thing about your muscle cells. They are individually wrapped in connective tissue. That connective tissue wrapped around a single muscle cell is called endomysium. I am going to represent endomysium with my Costco size box of saran wrap. So I'm gonna take some saran wrap. 
I'm gonna cut it. And then I am going to wrap, let's see if I can get that on camera here. I'm gonna wrap my muscle cell, right? My Twizzler pull and peel in saran wrap. Doesn't need to be perfect. This is my connective tissue. This is my endomysium. Look at that, already I have made this fiber much stronger just by wrapping it in connective tissue like that. Okay, so a single muscle cell wrapped in connective tissue. That layer of connective tissue is called endomysium. That makes sense because the word part endo means inner or innermost, right? And this is gonna be the innermost layer of connective tissue in our muscle. The muscle cells bundle together to form what we call a fascicle. So I already have some additional muscle cells ready over here. So each of these is a muscle fiber that is wrapped in endomysium and they bundle together to form what we call a fascicle. Okay, so here is a fascicle, super strong, but even a fascicle is wrapped in connective tissue. Okay, so a fascicle is a bundle of muscle cells or muscle fibers and that bundle is wrapped in connective tissue. Now this is gonna be sort of our in-between layer of connective tissue. We call this paramysium. Peri means uh, covering or surrounding. So paramysium is covering the, and again, I'm gonna show you here, I'm gonna wrap the entire bundle in my saran wrap. So the paramysium is covering the entire fascicle. Maybe it's stuck to my table. Here we go. Gonna wrap up the whole bundle in my saran wrap. Wrapping my fascicle in paramysium. So this is a fascicle wrapped in paramysium. Remember, there were a bunch of individual fibers that were wrapped in endomysium. At this point, I've already made it much stronger than it was when I just had a single fiber wrapped in connective tissue. Okay, then even the fascicles bundle together. They bundle together to form your individual organ, your whole skeletal muscle. Okay, so I, I, have, I, made, I actually made my kids, I did some child labor. I made my kids already make some additional fascicles. So I've got one, two, three, four, five fascicles that I've already um, made and bundled together with uh, paramysium on them. And your entire muscle is wrapped in connective tissue. That connective tissue is called epimysium. So I'm, now I'm going to wrap this entire muscle in connective tissue, epimysium. So I'm gonna take my last layer, and if you remember, the word part epi means on top of. So this is my final connective tissue layer, and it gets wrapped the whole thing. Making an entire skeletal muscle. So this would be like my biceps brachii, right? A whole skeletal muscle. So this whole outer layer of connective tissue on my muscle organ is called epimysium. Sometimes you'll hear the term fascia. Fascia just is a term used to describe this abundant connective tissue that's all around and in between your muscles and your skins and your bones, your blood vessels, your nerve fibers. It's just all the stuff you have to get through to get to the individual parts of your body. So like when we dissect cats at the end of the year, you'll hear me saying like, uh, to see that muscle, you're gonna have to kind of dig through the fascia. You gotta kind of separate all the connective tissue. That's what I say, that's what I mean when I say fascia. But when you're talking about your muscular system, there's two terms that you need to understand. You've heard one, one of them before, tendon. Tendon is the band of dense, connective, uh, dense regular connective tissue that attaches the muscle to the bone. That band of connective tissue comes from all of those layers of connective tissue that we just created when we created this muscle. So you see there's all my Twizzlers right here in the middle, but then there's a whole bunch of extra connective tissue, saran wrap, at both ends. That would be my tendon attaching to wherever it is on my body, right? Two points of attachment on my bones. If the tendon, or sorry, if the connective tissue is a flat sheet like you find on your skull or you find a big sheet of connective tissue right in front of your abdominal muscles, 
you refer to those as an aponeurosis instead of a tendon. So instead of being a big, thick cord or band like a tendon is, you would call that an aponeurosis. Okay, so just to prove that we have bundles within bundles, I'm gonna take the muscle organ that I just created and I'm going to do my best to cut it. It is very strong. I, I you know, I don't, I don't even think like a CrossFitter could have torn this muscle apart. It's pretty strong now that we've bundled it up and layered it up. And what do you know, when you look in there, I don't know if you can really see that. We can see each of our muscle fibers that's been wrapped in endomysium. We can see all of our muscle fibers that have bundled together and are wrapped in paramysium. And then I can see my whole muscle organ, my bundles of bundles, that's wrapped in that epimysium on top. Okay, then I can see my tendon, which would be where I attach to the bone. Okay, what I want you to do right now, don't cheat. Pause on this slide attempt to label this picture on your own just to see if you kind of get it. This picture can be kind of confusing, so like start with the things you know. Like I know that that's pointing to a bone, so let's go ahead and label bone here. So pause on this slide, try it on your own. Okay, I'm gonna click to the answers, but you need to pause. All right, so check your answers and see how you did. Fix anything if you need to fix it. And then there's a critical thinking question at the end. Um, and I want you to think about that critical thinking question. Again, I'm gonna show you the answer here in just a second, but I really want you to try it on your own. Don't cheat. All right, so here's the answer to the critical thinking question. When a muscle contracts, the force of movement is transmitted through the tendon, which pulls on the bone to produce skeletal movement. So like, for example, your gastrocnemius muscle, which is in your calf, is actually attached to your heel. So when that muscle contracts and shortens, it pulls up on your heel. Stick your leg out and contract your calf muscle. What happens? Your heel automatically pulls up, right? Because you've got a tendon pulling on your heel because that's where it attaches. Think about your biceps, okay? Look at where your biceps attach, uh, in your forearm and in your, on your clavicle, right? So when you contract your muscle, you're pulling up on the forearm, which is why your arm does this movement, because I'm contracting my bicep. All right, so hopefully this helped give you a little bit of a better image of what a muscle looks like, and this makes sense to you. Submit your notes organizer into CTLS by 5 p.m. on Thursday. I hope this finds you well and safe and hopefully very dry. Have a good day.